Today is going to be very interesting. Either I'm going to cut a whole bunch of big aluminum pieces, or I'm going to totally wreck a four foot by 10 foot sheet of aluminum. Here's the situation. I need a whole bunch of aluminum pieces that are about three feet, a little over three feet long. So I bought this four foot by 10 foot sheet and it just happens that if I lay everything out just right, I can cut all the pieces from this. The problem is it's 0 0.04 inches thick, which means it's flexible and I have to hold it down somehow. Simply clamping it on the edges isn't going to work. It's flexible enough that the center would rise up and every piece I cut out of it makes it more flexible. So let me show you what I've done. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I mean, it makes sense to me, but it might be a catastrophe. I've loaded the file. Here are all the pieces I need to cut. And in Mach 3 here, you can see the layout. And what I've done is I have moved the head of the machine around. I'm moving it now. And I've found spots in between the files where the tool should not go, and I've placed screws there. I used the machine to find all these places. So in theory, it'll cut around all these shapes and it will miss all of the screws. Now I've never cut metal on this machine and I'm just hoping I didn't screw up any of those tool paths because if I did, I wreck the aluminum, I wreck the end mill. And here's something I don't even know yet. This aluminum is thin enough that I don't know if this is enough screws. As it cuts these shapes, it might deform and pull up and be an entire mess. We're gonna find out. Now, since I've never cut metal on this machine before, I don't wanna jump right in and cut the entire file with all of the pieces. I first wanna check my feeds and speeds. That's the speed that you move the head and the, and the speed that you spin the little cutter and it gets pretty complicated. I'm using a piece of software called G-Wizard to figure out what those speeds and settings should be, and I'm gonna cut a tiny little part that is, again, hopefully in the blank space between the other pieces uh, to test things. So let's do that test cut now and see if it works. Hopefully everything will just work fine, and we can go on and cut all the other parts. I'm actually so paranoid about running this and ruining this that even for my test, the first run I'm gonna do without a tool just to see if the speed looks sane. Uh, I'm being overly ridiculously cautious here, but it, it can't hurt. Well, that seemed like a moderately sane speed to me for cutting through aluminum. Bear in mind, I'm also not super experienced with cutting through aluminum. Uh, all of my experience so far has been on the Tormach, where I'm cutting big fat pieces of uh, brass and aluminum, and that's a bit different and a whole different ball game than this thin stuff. We'll see what it does. Let's do it with an end mill in. Inspecting it closer, it actually has a really nice surface finish. What you see here that looks like a burr isn't. That's just the plastic sheeting that's on top of this. The only thing it looks like I need to change is I need to go down um, just, just a fraction deeper. As you can see, it looks like this is a burr, but if I get a good grip on it and peel it, you can see it's mostly just the plastic and a little bit of this, uh, this coating that's on it. Surface finish is pretty good. It went all the way through, but you can see there's some flex to this board. That's what may bite me on the big cut. And this spot drill is really just a placeholder so I can drill later. Um, 
think I need to copy these settings over to the big parts and we'll just run it. Maybe I'll turn on the dust collection as well to get these shavings. Okay, it's time for the first operation. I'm going to go around and drill two holes in each of the pieces that I'll use for stuff later. I don't want to divulge what it is because I might publish this video before I publish that project, so it's kind of still sort of a secret, maybe. Anyway, point is, I'm drilling a bunch of holes and hopefully it won't ruin everything. Let's do it. Okay, the hole drilling is over and it has not instilled a ton of confidence. Some of them go through just fine. Some of them insist on flexing. Now I'm using a square head at a flat end mill for this, which is not optimal. A drill might do much better. Um, but anywhere where the table can flex or where there's a hole below it, this stuff will flex the millimeter or so that it's being pushed and it won't cut through. But that's fine. Again, those are just placeholders. Hopefully, as I cut, the force is uh, radial instead of axial, and this will work. We will see. I, I'm giving this a 50-50 chance right now, if you guys are wanting to take bets. All right, I've got the file loaded up. I've checked again to make sure all of these screws are not in the way. This is a big one. If I've overlooked something obvious, you're probably screaming at the camera right now or at the screen. Hopefully it won't destroy all this. Let's run it and see. So now we see our first major problem. Uh, it's curling as it cuts. I'm gonna go through and put screws through those holes right there and hope that that's just enough to get the job done. Most of these went in just fine, right into the spoil board. However, some are located above a hole. So I've taken these longer screws and gone into some uh, extra material that I had lying around down below so that I can attach all of them. It actually cut two of them without issue, but as it got to the third here, it did this. And I suspect, judging by this melting material and the smell, that it was too hot. So uh, my fixturing is working, but I'm going maybe too slow on movement. I have no cooling on this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spit out the files for one, them one at a time and cut them individually and uh, give it a break in between each to cool down. Luckily, the sheet is big enough that I have one or two extra. So that is not a big loss right there, assuming that all the others work. That's also probably salvageable. Look how gummed up that end mill is. That is nasty. Hopefully I can just scrape that off or it won't get in the way whenever I start cutting again. Well, the concept totally worked. Here I have them. These pieces all cut out. The surface finish is actually not bad at all. Uh, there's a little bit of warping, but I can actually go through and flatten them all manually as part of the project. I'm so excited. There's enough sheet metal here that even though I had one crash and one weird goof, um, 
I've got an extra piece. I don't even need to keep cutting. It figures I'd worry so much about ruining the job and how it's going to crash, and then I crash right into my hose. Jeez. This is exciting. I'm so happy this worked out. I was kind of stressed going into this one. Uh, there you have it. That totally worked. Huh. See you next time.